Hi, my name is Ken Bishop and I'm the Director of Sales Engineering here at Interface Inc. And I'm here to show you how to get started with your Model 480 Bidirectional Weight Indicator. Before we do, I'd like to point out a few of its key features. One is it works with a variety of millivolt per volt force and torque transducers. It has 500,000 internal counts, a six digit 0.8 inch LED display, and can power up to 10 350 ohm load cells. Okay, first we're going to go through the steps we need to to access the inside of the indicator and connect the load cell up. So the first thing we do is remove the four screws from the four corners. And then the next thing we do is loosen this and keep the load cell uh, cable. We're going to insert it through um, this cable gland cap and then through the cable gland hole. We're going to unscrew this cover, which gives us access to the config button, and it'll also loosen a bracket that's on the inside. And of course, we need to unplug the unit before we begin any of this kind of work for safety precautions. I'm going to open this up now, and we're going to see the inside of this unit. As we unscrewed this piece from the back, it loosened this cover, which was covering up the connection where the load cell is going to be connected to the board. And so uh, we'll remove this piece and put it aside for now. The next thing is we're going to Make sure that the load cell wire is fed through the hole, as we said before, through the cable gland uh, cover first and through the cable gland and route it in to the inside of the unit. And then we're going to connect the load cell wires to this connector right here. And it will be um, per the instructions that are labeled here. You can't see them, but it shows you where plus excitation is minus excitation, sense, and also signals, plus and minus signals. So uh, we'll go through that activity, connect them up as such, and then when we're done with that, then we are going to close the cover for now, and then it replace some screws so that this unit is secure and we can begin working on it. So as you can see, we've secured the back panel with some screws. We've put the cable gland cover back in place and tightened it down. And now we're ready to enter config mode. Um, you can plug in your unit now safely. And then after it finishes its warm up cycle, then we'll go ahead and push this button inside this top hole here. When we do that, we get config mode, just like it shows right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the number of graduations. So we're going to use the down arrow key, it says grads, and then one more down. And we're going to enter a number here. We use the left and right key and the up and down key to change the digits. In this case, we're gonna have 10,000 graduations, in other words, 10,000 internal divisions on our calibration. Once we've done this, we hit the tear key, which is the enter, and it moves us back up to grads, and we're gonna to move to our next menu step, which is gonna be format. So I arrowed up to the config, where we came from, one over to the format, and now we're gonna start moving down the format path. We're going to do primary, which is the main one, and there is a secondary option as well, so you can program that the exact same way we're going to do the primary. Right now we're just doing the primary. And we're going to do the decimal point. When I arrow down, now it's showing me where the decimal point is currently located. For our calibration today, we're going to leave it in this particular position, which is there's one digit to the right of the decimal point. But if we wanted to move it, we just use the arrow right and left keys. 
right and left. When we're done, we hit the Enter key, and that takes us back up a menu step. Then we move back up to the Format top using the arrow up key, and then to the right where we're going to enter the Calibration menu. Once we get to the Calibration menu, we're going to go down the Calibration path. So we're going to use the arrow down, and it's, we're going to, first thing we're going to do is capture the zero. So I'm going to scroll down. It's, it's warning us now that we're getting close to calling the zero. And what we do with this unit is we cal with a live load. So you have to have a weight handy that's close or at the capacity of the unit. It's closer the better to the capacity of the, of the load cell. And then um, we leave, make sure that the uh, load cell is unloaded. Arrow down, it's going to tell us enter. When we hit the enter key, it's going to take a live measurement of what's on there. Right now it's taking the measurement. And don't worry about the number that shows up there. It's basically capturing, in this case, would be a zero offset. When we're done, we arrow back up to where the uh, W0 is. And now we're going to start entering the value for our cal. And that'll be the one that we're going to actually load the live weight on. So now we moved over one step to this W Val, and then we're going to arrow down one, and this is where we enter in the value. So it's the same as the other process where I um, can go up and down to change the digit, or left and right to change the digit. In this case, 10 pounds is what we're going to call it to. So we're going to hit enter, which is the tear button. And it's going to capture that value. Now we're going to move up. Move over to the right, to W span or U span. And this is where we're actually going to do the live load capture for the span. It says Cal. That's letting us know we're going to move into the Cal portion of the step. I'm going to load, in this case, a 10 pound weight on there. Make sure that everything's stable, and then hit enter. As I hit enter, it's now grabbed that value. Don't worry about what the screen is showing right now. It actually captured the correct value. And then now we're going to move to the next step. Well, I'll go ahead and remove the weight. And then I'm going to go ahead and arrow up. All the way back up to the top of the calibration menu. Move over one. And then what we're going to do here is we're just going to set it in NTEP mode, which basically gives you bipolar operation. So we're at the program step. We're going to move down to power UPM, but we're not going to stay there. We're going to move to the right one to regula, which is going to have the same category for NTEP in it, which is where we want to go. There's NTEP, and we're going to hit enter which is the tear button. When we do that, we basically now told it be in NTEP mode, which is bipolar mode. Now that we're done, we need to move our way back through the top of the menu, and it'll save our program. So by series of using left and right keys, we're going to go all the way back to the config, to the menu, and then arrow up. And when we do that, it saves it. This is an important step. Now it's going to the warm-up process. And once we see double zeros, we'll know now that we're in live mode. At this point, we can apply our weight and see if our calibration took. In this case, it shows 10 pounds. So we've successfully calibrated this load cell to our model 480 bipolar weight indicator. Thank you for joining us and enjoy using your Interface Model 480 Bipolar Weight Indicator. If you require further support, please contact an application engineer.